Hey everyone, Jamie here from TechnicalCafe.com. Welcome to your seventh CSS tutorial. In this tutorial, I want to talk a little bit about styling text using CSS, um, which is something we've actually talked about in a couple other tutorials, though we didn't really go too much in depth about it, so um, I figured I'd just spend a couple minutes talking about how to uh, style text using CSS. So right, right now, we don't have any text that's actually been styled. Um, we do have a div, though, which I added the border to um, in some margins and stuff like that. I also gave it a, um, a width of 600 pixels. Um, so this isn't actually the text that's been styled. The text is, an, is a header one tag and it uh, didn't even touch it with CSS. So what we're going to be doing now is actually creating some text underneath this. I'm um, just figuring with this up here just so you have an idea of what the tutorial is about. But underneath here, uh, so we're going to start writing some text and we're going to start styling it. Uh, just seeing what we can come up with. So uh, let's go into the code here. So we're actually using an external style sheet for this. And if you haven't watched the tutorials um, before on uh, styles, uh, creating external internal style sheets, stuff like that, I suggest you go check them out. Um, anyway, if you don't know what an external style sheet is, it's basically an external uh, page that we have, a CSS page. Um, so we, ours is called styles.css, and it's linked using the link at, uh, element in HTML. Um, so we just reference styles.css, and anything we write in here is going to be brought over to here, essentially. So um, let's get into the code a little bit here. So we have a div, um, which is where we put our header in here. And there's nothing really special about that. The CSS for that is right here, just out of the width border and some margins. And uh, there's currently no other text on the page. So let's actually go ahead and we'll create a paragraph. And we're going to give this paragraph an ID. And the reason we're giving this paragraph an ID is so that we can reference it. Um, and we're going to reference this particular paragraph just in case we add uh, other paragraphs. Uh, otherwise, we could just use the element selector in CSS and select all paragraphs. Um, but in case we add more, we're going to give this an ID. We'll call this, uh, we'll just call it text. So let's save it. And within here, we're going to add some text. We'll say this is some text. And we'll save that again. So let's just come over here to our uh, web page. And you'll see that here's our text. It's a little bit off to the corner, but that's okay. Um, so let's start styling it using CSS. So if we come over here to styles.css, you'll remember that the way that we reference a particular ID um, is by using the hashtag or the pound sign, number sign, whatever you want to call it. And then we're just going to use the name of the ID. So since over here we have an ID of text, we're just going to use number sign and we're going to say text. And then we're going to open up a code block using some curly brackets. And within here is where we're actually going to begin styling our text. So some of the things you might have seen before uh, in other tutorials which seem pretty simple are a couple properties like color. And we use the color property to change the color of text, obviously. However, there are two different ways you can actually go about changing the color of the text. Uh, one of them is using just plain old English words. We can say red. And if we close that there, we come over here and refresh, you'll notice that our text turns red. Uh, another way that we can do this is actually by using uh, hex color codes, which uses hexadecimal numbers. Um, and if you've watched some of the HTML tutorials that I made, one, one of the tutorials, I uh, included a link to a hex color page, but if you just Google hex color chart, you can find out a bunch of different hexadecimal color codes. Um, so those are generally in the format of a pound sign and then some text. So if we say 999, 999, uh, they're usually six digits long too. Uh, we can save that, come over here and refresh, and you'll notice that it's a grayish color. Um, we can actually kind of abbreviate that by deleting three of them. There's a shorter way to do it, which is just 999, and it's also the same grayish color even if we refresh. Um, so there's two ways you can actually change the color, which is using hex color codes and just plain old English. So let's go back here and we'll just call our color, we'll say blue. And there's our text. It looks nice, nice color. Um, so the next thing we're going to talk about is using text decoration. And text decoration basically means what we're going to do to the text in terms of like underlines, strike throughs, uh, and even overlines. So um, let's come on over here and we'll just start writing this. So we'll say text decoration. And by default, the text decoration is set to none. So if we just say none, and by the way, there's uh, a hyphen in between text and decoration. So if we come over here, actually didn't save that, and we refresh, you'll notice that our text doesn't change. And that's because I believe by default the text decoration is set to none. So if we come over here, let's say we want to have an underline. This is where the text decoration comes in handy. So we just say underline. And this is, I believe, what the default is for hyperlinks. It's, as a, you know, a hyperlink has an underline underneath it. Um, so if we set text decoration to none with a hyperlink, it'll remove the underline. But in this case, with just plain old paragraph text, uh, it'll actually add the underline when we say underline here in our, our CSS code. 
Uh, there's also a couple other things we can do. We can come over here and say uh, line through. almost forgot that for a second. So if we say line dash through and we refresh, you'll notice that the underline kind of jumps up and is like a strike through effect. It goes right through the text. And I actually tried using the strike through, just typing in strike through and strike dash through, and it didn't work, so you have to use the line dash through method of this. So that's that. And we can also use an overline which just adds an underline uh, on top. It's not really anything special. So if we just say underline, uh, we'll just stick with that for right now. It looks nice. Um, so there's a couple other things we can do. We can say font uh, family. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow you to specify the font family that you want to use with your text. Um, we can say, for example, Times New Roman. And if we save that, come over here and refresh. Um, I think this is already Times New Roman or something like that, but uh, let's say we want to use Arial. It'll change the text to Arial. And you can actually specify, I believe, a couple different font families in case the browser doesn't um, support the particular font that you're using. Um, so we'll just leave this as Arial right now. And there's also another attribute that I want to talk about, which is font style. And for this is where, this is where we can actually start to italicize our font or something like that. So we can say uh, italics, and we save that. Come over here and refresh. Oop, maybe it's just italic. Yep, it's just italic. So if we say italic, it'll make our text um, just italic. It'll kind of slant it over a little bit. Um, we can also say oblique, which I read on the W3Schools website before I'm creating this tutorial, that the, the oblique is just like italic, but it's slightly less slanted. Um, I'm not sure really if you notice the difference, but so there's the uh, oblique, there's italic. Um, so also you can just say uh, font style is none, and it'll just make it back to normal. So um, that's up to you. You can choose that if you want to. And there's also font weight, and this is where you can start to bold stuff. So you can say uh, bold. And if we save that, come over here and refresh, you'll notice that our text becomes bold. Um, so this is just stuff you can play around with. If you do a Google search or use your favorite search engine, you can find more uh, CSS font styling things. Uh, I just do a search like CSS st font styles or styling font using CSS. Uh, and you can find stuff like that. So if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please feel free to leave them in the comments, or you can use the Technical Cafe comment form to let me know. Uh, also, feel free to follow me on Twitter at twitter.com slash jamiemcg. Uh, this is Technical Cafe Twitter, twitter.com slash technicalcafe. Uh, and again, please feel free to let me know if you have any questions or anything. Thanks for watching.